There was disbelief on Capitol Hill where most House and Senate members had come to believe the vice president's assertions that he fully intended to fight the charges all the way. We have a period of time when there's political erosion, confidence and faith, and the whole system has been challenged by many people. And now to have this kind of confirmation of the worst suspicions that some people have held is really a very profound impact on the whole country. I'm just sick about it. I think he's a man of his word, and I think they've all been doing the same thing for ever since I started voting, and I think it's just too bad. I think he's a great man. I think it was very unnecessary. I'm just, oh, I'm, I'm just sick. I'm very unhappy. I don't think it was necessary. I think it's a lot of political hogwash, and I'm, oh. I thought he was one of the greatest men that this country has ever had. What is your reaction to the resignation? I think it's just a sad thing. You can see them out there with the flags on the causeway to Mar-a-Lago, right? He said he was innocent, and he said it was a witch hunt. He attacked the prosecutors one by one. He attacked them by name. He attacked the prosecutors who he said were, were bent on destroying him for purely political reasons. He rallied his supporters to his defense. He said he would not stand for it. He said even if he was indicted, he would not step down. Then he was indicted, he stepped down. He took a plea deal that forced him out of public office, but saved him from other serious legal consequences he was facing. He still said he was innocent, still said it had been a political witch hunt. His supporters were still shocked and mad and ooh, at some points they couldn't even speak. They didn't even have the words. They were so upset. And then we got over it. And everyone, I mean everyone, forgot who Spiro Agnew is. I mean, he went on in his later life to claim that Nixon tried to have him murdered. Nobody even cared about that. He also went on to become an anti-Semite for hire. He got the Saudi royal family to put him on the payroll to denounce Jews in the United States. That was his job later in life, former vice president of the United States. You think he might even become famous again for something like that, but no. He ended up totally forgotten, remembered, if at all, as a crook and as a whiner about it. But mostly he's not remembered at all. And that is because at the end of the day, the prosecutors who investigated his crimes, who found the documents, who flipped the witnesses, who, uh, who, who got the testimony, who presented it all to the grand jury, who secured the indictment on those felony charges against the vice president, they just put their heads down and they followed the law. They didn't get scared, or at least if they did get scared, they didn't get scared off by the intimidation tactics that were absolutely brought to bear against them, by members of the vice president's party who tried to derail the investigation, by the threats and the hate mail that came in against them by the truckload. They were not scared off. They just put their heads down. They followed the law. They built the case. And they made history. I would hope first that the nation would feel that the process of criminal justice is one that it can trust and have confidence in. I would hope that it would feel that the interests of the nation have been placed first by all those concerned. This is Elliot Richardson, who was the attorney general at the U.S. Department of Justice at the time this case was brought against, again, a vice president who was only a former vice president by about two minutes by the time he actually pled in court. Elliot Richardson was the attorney general at the last time a former president or vice president was indicted in this country. I would hope that most fundamentally all of us would have confidence that our system works. Indeed, uh, I think this is the most affirmative aspect of all that has taken place over recent months, all the disclosures, the investigations, the indictments. They have exposed the shoddy side of the governmental and political process. But they have also demonstrated that the governmental and political process is capable of uncovering these things and having uncovered them, taking proper action. We are capable of uncovering these crimes. All these disclosures, these investigations, these indictments, they've exposed the shoddy side 
of the governmental and political process, but we are capable of uncovering these crimes, and having uncovered them, our system is capable of taking proper action. Attorney General Elliot Richardson. On Tuesday next week, at 2.15 p.m. Eastern, former President Donald Trump is due to be arraigned in criminal court in downtown Manhattan, at which time we expect the indictment against him to be unsealed. That indictment reportedly includes more than two dozen charges. But who knows? It's under seal. We will know when it gets unsealed, and there's no reason to speculate about it before then. It's coming soon enough. And while we have had lots and lots of experience indicting crooked politicians of various kinds in this country, literally thousands of politicians have been indicted in this country since, the, since our birth as a country. We haven't done it very much for politicians who have been at the White House level, but we did do it 50 years ago. Young prosecutors Ron Liebman, Tim Baker, Barney Skolnick, they did it in the case of Vice President Spiro Agnew without fear or favor, without being intimidated, despite what Agnew tried to bring down on them, despite the upset of Agnew's rabid conservative supporters.